If you have a large network, then you probably have multiple subnets that separates traffic inside of your organization. There might be subnets dedicated to a particular department, or you might have a subnet that's for a server farm or a set of security devices. And you might want to make sure those always stay within that subnet and nothing else happens to be a member of that subnet. To configure this in your switch, you would simply assign switch ports to a particular VLAN. Maybe your security network goes into the security VLAN, your server farm network goes into the server farm VLAN, and maybe the marketing department has their own VLAN. So as you're plugging in devices into your switches, you'll tell the switch, Anything that's plugged into this port is a member of the marketing VLAN. Anything on this port over here is a member of our server farm VLAN. You can also do some of this automatically using network access control. And the standard for that is 802.1x. With network access control, you plug in your device to any particular port on the switch, and then you have to authenticate. And behind the scenes, the switch can decides what VLAN you should be on and dynamically assigns you to that particular VLAN, which is one of the main benefits of having a network access configuration inside of your network. Whenever you need to connect switches together and you want to put multiple VLANs in that single link between the switches, you use something called a trunk. And a trunk is just a specially designed port where you've told the switches, I'm going to put a lot of different tunnels, a lot of different VLANs inside of this trunk. So expect a lot of information to go back and forth over this link that contains data from many, many different networks. And please keep them separate. And when it, traffic gets to the other side, please put them onto the appropriate networks for those particular VLANs. Whenever you're configuring a switch then, you'll be at the command line configuring this. Many switches also have graphical displays so that you can visually see the different VLANs and then put different ports into those different VLAN configurations. If we were to visualize this subnetted VLAN configuration, this is what it might look like. We have a green network and a red network and a blue network. And these are the ports on the switch where those devices are plugging in. So you'd be telling your switch, on this interface, put that on the green VLAN. On this interface, put this on the red VLAN and the blue VLAN. Now in reality, our VLANs are numbers. So they might be VLAN 1, VLAN 70, VLAN 144. And you would configure each one of these with the appropriate VLAN number for the devices that are plugging in. Notice that we also have trunks between these switches. And we would tell these trunks to tr allow certain traffic to traverse. Pick VLAN 1 and VLAN 7. Allow those particular VLANs to tunnel through that particular trunk. You'll notice that we don't have all VLANs configured on every trunk. You can see by the colors here. But that doesn't mean that you can't add one later. You might want to put a green device on this switch. We'll configure a port on the switch to be on the green VLAN. And then we'll configure our trunk to allow green VLAN traffic to traverse. If we didn't do that, then any device that was put onto this switch on the green VLAN would not be able to communicate with the other devices that we have on other switches that happen to be on the same subnet. So that's an important consideration. Not only do you need to configure ports on your switch for the individual devices, you have to make sure that you've set your trunks up properly so that all your VLANs can communicate within the same subnet.